Hello and welcome to class number 44 of the UPSC Mains Answer Writing Initiative, a place where we are trying to help you with your UPSC Mains Answer Writing, remove the fear from your mind and make you habitual of facing these questions. Every single day at 7 p.m. we have a class here where we discuss a previous year question, try and answer that, try and structure the answer and then give your homework as well for your own practice which you can send also for your evaluation. So far we have had 43 classes before this is the 44th class. In case you missed out on any of the earlier classes, I am giving the link of this entire playlist in the description of the video. Go and watch that. It will be extremely, extremely helpful for all of you. Also, if you are new here and if you have no idea how to begin answer writing, I have one suggestion for you. Go to the entire playlist and go to class number one. Because in the first class, we had discussed about how to structure the answer, what to write in the introduction, main body conclusion, where you can actually give subheadings. All these things have been discussed in the very first class. So do go and see that. Once you're done with that, you can come back and we will see what question are we solving today. Today again, we have taken up a question from 2022 GS2 paper. The Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 remains only a legal document without intense sensitization of government functionaries and citizens regarding disability comment. Question is simple, straightforward, that although we do have a Persons with Disability Act, in reality it is just a legal document, but unless we educate and sensitize the government officials and the citizens about the act, it would not really have an impact. Now, I have told this earlier as well, when you have these questions where they are not asking you something specifically, they are just asking you to comment or discuss, then what do you do? Then you elaborate on this. Elaborate on this, for example, you have the problem, the first statement talks about a problem. So first part of the main body, you elaborate the problem. The problem that exists or the reasons why this act has not been able to ensure that it impacts the lives of people with disability positively. And then second part, you can write either about the suggestions or you can write about why is it needed or the need to do this, something like that. So again, don't confuse yourself just because a question is not asking you something specifically here. They're just giving a statement and they're asking you to discuss or comment, elaborate on what they are saying. What they have said in one line, elaborate, give example, say that yes, it does happen. And then you can basically give a way forward if you want to suggest how to improve that situation. In the introduction part, it's a question where you can start with a fact, fact about this particular law. When was it introduced or for example, if let's say there is a law that came into being after recommendation of a certain committee. Then you can give an example that as per the recommendation of this committee, this law was passed or if a certain Supreme Court judgment was given to pass this law, you can mention that as well. So depending upon the background of the law, you can start the answer. So rights to people with disabilities act came into force in April 2017 to give effect to UN Convention on Rights with Persons with Disability. Something like this can be the introduction of this particular question again, whichever fact that you remember, if a topic that is in the news has been asked, if let's say <clears throat> something is in the news and based on that, the question is asked, it can be floods, it can be landslide, it can be election, it can be any importance of being good judgment. If something that is in the news question has been asked on that, please mention that as the introduction. So that the examiner knows that you know why it is in the news. So to set the context, if it is in the news, do mention that in the introduction at least. In the main body, we write about the challenges of the act. Whenever you are writing challenges of any law, <clears throat> whenever you have to criticize any law, the first point will always be the same, improper implementation. Unfortunately, that is true for a lot of laws in India. So whenever you are asked to criticize any law, doesn't matter which law is it, you can always add the first point that implementation is not up to the mark. Here also implementation not up to the mark. Most of the buildings, even government buildings are not friendly to people with disability. 
despite the government running the accessible india campaign there is a court of reservation seat that has increased but again a lot of those seats still remain vacant there is lack of awareness so employment opportunities are much 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 lesser even the health opportunities or health facilities are not up to the mark not just employment opportunities education look at schools colleges even as simple as let's say going to an atm machine when you go to an atm machine you have to climb let's say three or four steps of stair now that can be a very challenging part for someone who has a disability and who cannot climb so even those most simple things can be challenged discrimination they have their own stigma they have been discriminated against in jobs etc and even political participation think about it can you remember any minister in the history of india who was suffering from disability i'm not talking about the present government i'm saying in the history of india so far can you remember any minister who had some disability most probably you will not be able to remember so if you can't remember in our close to 75 years of independence people who are suffering from certain disability who have been given such post then how can you expect that in the common life or in normal positions they would not be discriminated against and that is where the government also needs to be sensitized need for sensitization why do we need it again first we have to ensure that the judicial pronouncement whatever the supreme court says that is implemented properly the laws are implemented properly we have to process the government scheme the initiative the governments at the center and at the state launch a lot of scheme for people suffering from any kind of disability but very seldom do they reach the ground level people should treat the disabled with empathy and provide them on life proper livelihood there should be dignity non discrimination all these are again if you can realize these are very generic points this is not something very specific as such so you are not giving a hardcore suggestion which no one else would give you very generic points because any common man if you ask them why is there a need for people to be sensitized about people suffering from disability anyone can give you these generic points this is what you can write here in the main body in the concluding argument again i have told you earlier whenever the question is about a problem you can always give a way forward in the conclusion so you can give a way forward or you can also term them as suggestions how to improve the situation community based rehabilitation improving public awareness collaborating with the states tracking the funds allocated by the governments are they being used properly or not giving more importance or giving uh, more funding etc to these kind of bodies that are working for the interest of the persons uh, who are suffering with some disability helping ngos all these can be suggestions or way forward so again whenever a question is about a problem in the concluding argument way forward it can be written and then we'll conclude it if you wanted you could have skipped the conclusion because way forward itself can act as a conclusion also so it depends upon you if you want to write a couple of other lines just to summarize it you can write conclusion separately but if you have written a way forward that can act as a conclusion as well you can conclude it by how by saying our government and judiciary play an important role with respect to disabled people and implementation of this act also in, has to be done by the government and the judiciary as well by taking the first step ahead that is how we can write this particular answer and now it is time for you take this homework and write the an answer analyze the potential hurdles and prospects india faces in leveraging its demographic dividend to boost employment and economic growth try and write this answer in about 200 words if you want me to evaluate i'll be happy to do that send this across to this email id i usually take a couple of days to respond for your answers evaluation do hit the subscribe and the like button if you have not done so far i'll see you in the next one tomorrow at 7 pm thank you so much bye bye jai hind